What's up? This is part three of my situational awareness series where I'll be discussing surveillance detection routes. What they are, how to do them properly in order to maximize your safety and enhance your situational awareness skills. So stay tuned. Welcome back, Carlos here with Rage and Tactical. On this channel, we create content full of visual tips, techniques, and or drills just like this one to help you build and or expand your tactical knowledge base. So if you're new here, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and that notification bell to catch all my latest videos. Okay, as mentioned, this is part three of my Situational Awareness series where I'll be discussing Surveillance Detection Routes or SDRs. Before I get started though, if you haven't seen my first videos, check those out because they lay the foundation for understanding what Situational Awareness is. I discuss the levels of awareness and provide a few bonus exercises to help you improve your Situational Awareness skills. In part two, I discuss pre-assault indicators, so make sure to check those out. All right, surveillance detection routes are maneuvers or things you do typically while driving to spot or identify if anybody is following you, right? Or if you're being targeted. So the question is who can benefit from SDRs? Yes, you. It doesn't matter if you're a high ranking government official, a blue collar worker, or that working mom on your way home from soccer practice. Given today's political environment and based on the things that are happening around the world, anyone can be targeted and this typically happens by one of two methods first you have been actively identified or targeted maybe you're in a high profile profession and you may be targeted for ransom or a robbery or maybe you're in law enforcement and an ex-criminal is targeting you for payback or that ex-partner you know boyfriend girlfriend type thing Basically, someone has identified you and you're actively being targeted and or followed for whatever reason. The other group is what's considered targets of opportunity or chance contact. This is more commonly used by criminals. This could be something as simple as you were observed uh, withdrawing cash from an ATM and now you're being targeted or you were spotted at the grocery store and identified as a potential victim and now you're being followed home either to identify where you live and come back later or attack you as you pull up the driveway if the opportunity presents itself. All right, so before we discuss the tactics and how to conduct SDRs, it's important to do some homework or pre-planning. This is done by conducting a map reconnaissance of your daily travel routes particularly your endpoints, right? Where you work and where you live. We need to identify several routes in and out of those areas and use different routes so that we're not using the same way in and out every day. Uh, if you are being targeted, they may know where you live and work, so they don't need to follow you everywhere. They'll simply wait at key terrain or intersections until you arrive and then follow you from there, right? By using different routes, it allows us to be unpredictable. Let's take a look at the map on the computer for a few examples. Okay, let's say this is my house here. Let's zoom out on the map and take a look. Say this is the main highway we take in every day. I have an option here, you know, get off the highway and approach from the south, or I can stay on for an additional exit and come in from the north. Let's use this south side here for a good kind of uh, demonstration purposes. So let's say I take this first road in. This is a really good one because I got a left turn, left turn, left turn again. Very obvious that somebody's following me through all those turns. And then I have a really good kind of cul-de-sac dead end. I can kind of drive in here, stand by for a minute, and can observe if anybody's following me in. Additionally, I have multiple options in and out. This is a good one. It leads back to a main road. Or I can stay on this main road here and then come all the way back and then double back towards my house. Again, this one's pretty good because it has a, a few good kind of uh, dead end cul-de-sacs that I can kind of pull into real quick. The key here is just to identify on the map how many routes you have in and out of the area and just pick a different one to use every day. Uh, that way you are unpredictable. All right, now that we've done our homework, the next step is to be observant as we're driving. This is key, right? Use your rear view mirrors and identify what vehicles are around you. Is that same white or red car still there from the last few turns? As we are observing, there are a few things we can do to help us identify if we are being followed. Here are a few examples. A simple one is to speed up or slow down. 
and see if anyone is keeping pace with you. Now, don't make this super obvious and just hit the gas pedal. The key is to make it look natural. Next, we can do multiple lane changes. Again, if you see anyone mirroring your movements, it's a good indication. Along those same lines is to indicate a possible right-hand turn for that next intersection, and at the very last moment, you simply turn it off and keep going straight. Again, looking back to see if anybody is following or mirroring your movements. Another classic one is the U-turn. If anyone is following you, they will either need to stop following you or it will become super obvious. Lastly, before you go home, don't go straight there. Take some time and drive through some of that nearby residential area as these areas are the hardest areas to follow someone in because it is super hard to blend in and anyone following you will stick out. The key is to be unpredictable and use different routes in and out of the area and make multiple you know, turns or unplanned stops at different locations to spot if you're being followed. But again, this only works if you're paying attention, so be observant. Now, a few bonus tips. First, I do not recommend breaking any traffic laws like running red lights or cutting across three lanes of traffic. While you're doing your SDRs, just be observant. Next, don't get complacent. This is the number one reason people get attacked. Uh, you know, they've taken that same route home every day for the last few years, and that one time they're not being observant, it happens right in their driveway. And most importantly, if you do feel you are being followed, do not drive home. Either go somewhere public and wait or call for help, either a spouse, a friend, or the police. It's better to be wrong and safe than dismiss it and now we're being attacked because we were complacent. Okay, those are a few tips on how to conduct surveillance detection routes. I really hope you enjoyed this video and learned something worth adding to your tactical knowledge base. Again, if you haven't seen my first two parts, I encourage you to do so as they are the key to developing well-rounded situational awareness skills. As always, if you found this information valuable, like this video, leave me a comment, and don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell as it truly does help. With that, stay safe and train hard.